issues that were raised by our panelists, and indeed you may well have questions to put to some of our panelists as well. Just before we do that, I, I want to just maybe kick around a couple of questions with our panelists before we open it up to the floor. And I suppose, Matthew, perhaps if back to you first. Of all the elements of the Obama 2012 campaign, so the online, social media, the attacks on Mitt Romney, Obama's television addresses, the problems with the other side, which do you think was the element that was most successful or did most to get Obama elected? Um, well, the first thing, just a small point, um, I prefer not to say that we uh, attacked Mitt Romney. Um, people talk about negative campaigning, I call it contrast campaigning. Um, I think it's a, a, an important difference. Um, you know, the, the number one reason that Barack Obama is uh, president and was re-elected um, is Barack Obama. Um, uh, because he, had, uh, he has the vision uh, and the policies to take the country forward and um, uh, people uh, uh, saw that and, and agreed with him and voted for him. And so I think it's important when we talk about campaigns to remember that um, uh, elections are decided on fundamental issues uh, to voters and the campaigns, um, you know, David Bluff called the uh, campaign in 2008 the field goal unit. Maybe it doesn't, tra the sports metaphor doesn't translate as well in Europe, but field goal in, in the US, uh, you know, it's worth three points, but you have to be quite close to the line already. Um, and so, you know, campaigns uh, can help you a huge amount and are, are, are very important, but um, we shouldn't ever forget that um, elections are about fundamental uh, issues of the future of, of the nation and, 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 and so on. But it, in, in terms of the most important part of the campaign, um, I think that um, you know, it all came back to uh, the community organizing that Barack Obama did when he left Harvard and went to work on the south side of Chicago, uh, uh, working with uh, unemployed uh, steel workers and that ethos that he took into his campaign in 2007, 2008, and carried on through 2012. Knocking on doors, talking to people in their communities, talking back to people about their issues. The social media and online component uh, uh, helped back that in, and the television ads and everything else that we did uh, through the um, earned media was incredibly important. But I think that the, the, crucial, the crucial difference was the the level of organisation that we had uh, on the ground and the way that the campaign as a whole uh, backed that up. But then I suppose maybe that's the challenge for those who are involved in the European elections. You're not talking about one individual who's incredibly well known. You're talking about, as far as the MEPs are concerned, over 700 of them in many countries around the EU. So how can you actually extrapolate some of the successful campaign elements and then use them for the European elections next year. Yeah, I think I think that's a great point, and it's obviously a, a challenge that um, part, political parties generally, but pan-European political parties need to think about specifically. You know, the thing for me is that there's a slight misunderstanding that um, the inspiration that the president uh, gave people was about him personally. You know, I think there's an element of that. He's an incredibly powerful speaker. He has an incredibly powerful story, and represents something that people feel an attachment to. Um, but I don't think it's a question of his charisma. I think it's about the inspiration uh, that he gave people that there was a, a chance for change uh, and, a, and a, a hope for something different in, in America. And so um, I think that people can be inspired by individuals, but they can also be inspired by ideas. You know, the comparison I use is uh, 1997 in the UK. Um, people were to some extent inspired by Tony Blair, but really they were inspired by the chance of change in government uh, and got involved um, in, in the political campaign then uh, because of a, a, a dislike to a great extent of the Conservative Party, uh, also hoped for a, a, a new way under, under uh, a Labour government. So I think there are ways of inspiring people that aren't necessarily through the prism of a person. Um, and that goes back to my point that um, if you try and com if you try and pull across the tactical lessons of America uh, in the 2012 election, you might get tripped up. And you need to think about the principles that underpinned the campaign there. Okay, very interesting, Annie. Maybe just to you, um, 
how, what do you think are the main, going to be the main challenges, for example, from a Greek perspective, in either A, convincing people to go out and vote, and obviously, particularly in Greece, maybe you, there is a fear that there will be a rise of um, more, much more radical parties next time in the European Parliament after the elections. Well, actually, uh, there is a, a concern which applies not only to Greece, that, that uh, uh, we will see a significant rise of uh, extremes, uh, especially extreme uh, 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 choices uh, and uh, 2015 European elections. This is something that is already reflected in uh, a number of national surveys, and uh, it's also reflected uh, in the uh, Eurobarometer. So there is a real risk. This uh, risk uh, is related to the situation that we described in Vanna, that Bersetis described regarding uh, the perceptions among European citizens. Bersetis said that uh, uh, as a regional responsible, I would suggest that you do not have uh, high expectations uh, in terms ahead of the, of the elections, in terms of participation, I suppose also in terms of choices, of political choices, and I fully uh, agree. I would just complement what she said, that uh, uh, in order to uh, um, uh, reduce these uh, uh, modest expectations, try uh, to uh, increase a little bit uh, the expectations that we are having ahead of the elections, the, method, the message of Mercedes could be complemented uh, with an appeal to the decision makers, uh, as I pointed out before, to act uh, more ahead uh, of the European uh, elections and try to uh, give some concrete uh, answers, not just uh, uh, through improving the communication skills in order to change the perceptions. So actions, one had uh, uh, on the communication, uh, Jane, for example, very rightly pointed out that why, why there is this, this uh, growing uh, Euroscepticism, uh, growing reservations towards European project, towards European institutions. And she uh, said this is due to the lack of information. This is then our duty as an institutional uh, campaign to raise uh, understanding, to raise uh, awareness among European citizens, explain what the Parliament is doing. And actually, Jane, uh, the Parliament is doing things which very often are not uh, uh, very easily communicated and perceived by the citizens. Why? Because there is an old tradition, wrong one to my view, especially from national authorities, national politicians, for whatever is, uh, uh, is evil, is bad, responsible, uh, uh, is the Europe, is the, uh, the European institutions, the European decision-making system, and, uh, and uh, for uh, all the benefit, it's their decision, their national uh, governments, uh, that uh, uh, have to benefit from this. And the last point, Karen, because she, uh, she focused on the, she used as an example the perceptions among the British citizens. We know that among the British there is a specific situation. We know that there is uh, a referendum ahead of us from the British government in relation to the uh, future of membership. Britain in the EU. But let me give you just one concrete example, just one, one example in relation to this uh, misuse and this uh, <coughs> between national and Europeans. The EU has decided so far, through a very active role of the European Parliament, to uh, put uh, a cap in uh, bank managers' bonuses. Uh, and that was to the benefit of European citizens, and that was to the benefit of British citizens. Uh, the British, as you know, the British government has launched a legal procedure to the European Court, Court of Justice against this very concrete uh, decision which benefits uh, the citizens. Okay, and um, uh, Mercedes, I think you wanted to come in on that point. Uh, we. we c'est clair que les campagnes d'information euh, de type institutionnel sont 
toujours froides, même quand elles touchent des questions importantes pour les citoyens. Je crois qu'une campagne électorale doit être une campagne dans laquelle, comme euh, Mathieu nous l'a expliqué, euh, on se confronte sur des visions. Et donc, euh, je pense que pour la première fois, nous aurons la possibilité de voter pour les candidats présidents de la commission des différents partis politiques, groupes, règlements politiques, euh, qui vont euh, mettre en évidence que l'Europe peut être une chose ou une autre selon les, les programmes et les visions qui sont présentés. Parce que je crois que cette fois, nous ne devons pas louper cette nouveauté. Euh, les gens euh, ne, ne, ne peuvent pas rentrer dans les détails. Et donc, ce sera inutile d'expliquer le détail de tout ce qui a été bien fait, parce que de toute façon, les journaux pendant toutes ces dernières cinq ans après les, euh, les, les élections passées, quatre ans après les élections passées, n'ont fait que dire que tout était de la faute à l'Europe. Chaque chose qui se passait était de la faute à l'Europe. Alors, euh, les gens s'attendent à que euh, deux différentes visions politiques, deux et, et quelques autres possibles, enfin deux grandes options politiques soient présentées et euh, si on arrive à les convaincre que leur vote est utile pour choisir celles qui préfèrent de ces deux visions, euh, je pense qu'on les amènera à voter et surtout on les amènera à comprendre que l'Europe est où se passe les décisions les plus importantes pour leur vie. Et donc, qu'ils qu doivent choisir hein, et qu'ils doivent se, se préoccuper de, de participer à, à ce choix. Bon, euh, ce serait une expérience absolument nouvelle pour les élections européennes, mais moi, ce qui m'a frappé beaucoup de ce que Mathieu a dit, c'est exactement ça. Les gens veulent participer à une vision. Et donc, c'est notre devoir en tant que représentant politique de l'Europe, des gens qui, qui sont pro-européens mais qui ont une vision de l'Europe, de la faire partager et d'essayer de la faire partager aux citoyens. Puis on sait très bien qu'après l'Europe doit de toute façon trouver des, des compromis. Mais les compromis seront différents selon euh, le choix qui aura été clairement fait par les citoyens européens. Ce sera difficile à la Commission, au Conseil euh, et naturellement, encore plus fortement, de nier le fait qu'il y aura eu un choix. Et il faut que les citoyens européens sachent que pour la première fois, c'est à eux de parler sur l'Europe et donc de choisir de présenter leur, leur vision. Moi, je pense que euh, c'est peut-être ça aussi que le Parlement devrait dire. Pour la première fois, vous ferez un choix sur des visions différentes de l'Europe. Écoutez-les. C'est clair que le Parlement ne peut pas dire laquelle est meilleure, hein, parce qu'il est fait de gens avec des options politiques différentes. Mais il doit dire que pour la première fois, il doit écouter et choisir. Et c'est la première fois que grâce à l'action du Parlement européen, parce que ça a été une action très claire du Parlement européen, euh, on, on, on aura la possibilité de faire ce choix. Moi, je pense que euh, c'est ça qui va changer la, la, et qui peut changer la campagne politique pour les Européens et aussi amener euh, non seulement plus de gens à créer, mais faire plus de Ok, uh, Mercedes, just before we go to um, our audience, Minister, I think you, you may want to comment directly on what Mercedes was saying, but also some of the earlier points as well. Well, thanks. Um, many inspiring ideas. Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to, uh, to, to make a uh, uh, short point uh, first. Uh, the gist of the matter is, uh, in my view, uh, just to show how the decisions taken at the European level are going to impact on daily life, on daily life of an uh, average uh, European citizen. That's the gist of the matter, and that's the message that, that we have to get across. Generally, uh, of blaming Brussels for uh, all the social economic conundrum that we've gone through <coughs> is that uh, get a message across that without Brussels and without all the uh, 28 uh, member states acting together, getting their act together, uh, we can fight uh, the persistent problem that we are facing back home. 
and uh, very uh, course uh, the uh, my other principal question is how to connect, reconnect with the people. And for this, of course, it's uh, it's, it's only partially a uh, uh, problem uh, that, that the communicators can solve. But 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 there is uh, but for this uh, there is no magic answer. Uh, I do not first work for 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 it, but. But judging from uh, my uh, own experiences, I, I, I suggest using uh, a smart mix of social media plus very traditional meaning of knocking on every single door back home. Okay, good advice there. Um, let's open it up to the floor. So, um, when you ask a question, if I could ask you to give me your name and the organization you represent, if so, and also if you particularly want to uh, direct your question to one of the panelists. So, first off, gentlemen, there, if you just would press the mic button. <coughs> yeah, so, uh, my name is Sadhu, and I come from the Bertie School of Governance in Berlin. So, I, I had a question. So, initially, Jane said that uh, people are not stupid. And then Matthew was, one of his tips was make it easy and all the campaigns should be easy. So this question is a little tricky. But I want to know where does this stop? Is, it, is this a race to the bottom that we keep on diluting the message in order to make it easy and then we cut out the details? Because the video that was shown on tax was a beautiful video, but it, it ignored the details because it was so easy. So where does this end? That's my question. Okay, sorry, did you say you wanted to direct the first part to Jane or is it directly to Matthew? Yeah, I, I think I would like both of them to come. Oh, okay, well, uh, Jane, if you could take uh, the first question and then I'll go to Matthew. I'm arguing that the outset, but I don't think simplicity is a race to the bottom. I think simplicity is, is absolutely what's essential in any election campaign. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a tiny, tiny percentage of people who are university graduates uh, in, in, in the European Union. You know, you understand, it, 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 we've got to be a much, much more simple in our communication. I think what the European Parliament uh, video did, um, and interestingly enough, I find it more and more as I watch it, is it stirs your emotion. <coughs> And I think that that's what makes you feel good at the end. You know, maybe even third or fourth time watching, you feel better and better. And that's not telling you anything, but it's just making you feel this is an okay thing. And I think that's a very, very useful way it's done. Um, uh, so that's the simplicity argument. No, be simple, no matter what level you're at. Uh, I prefer two syllables always to three syllables. Um, I'm going back to the issue that, uh, or that was discussed before, the knocking on the door, the, the minister said, uh, that is absolutely where I say is the most important, face to face. The problem is, in somewhere like Northern Ireland where I come, the constituency is 1.7 million people. Sorry, that's not all voters, that's population. How can you knock that many doors? It's impossible. So you've got to get to the next step, and that is uh, the, the new thing we have of what we've heard about today, which is the Facebooks and the Twitters, etc. And again, 8 million tweets or, or views of that parliamentary video. Um, that, that's, that's a new thing we have, and that's a fantastic tool for accessing. Especially if you can't knock the door, you can reply to a Twitter. So somebody feels as if they're personally involved. Then the next one is the dispelling the myths and the scapegoatism that's, that, that's used. For, for everything that is European. They did it, we didn't, we only did the good things. Um, the dispelling the myths, uh, for example, the issue that Anna said about um, the bank, capital bankers' uh, bonuses. You know, that's, you might see that in the Financial Times, but you don't see it in the tabloids. So the press have got a huge role to play in this. They should be starting to recognize that Europe has got something to say that's important for tabloid readers, not just the Financial Times. Uh, finally, I just want to say that, uh, that certainly the EEFC is out there trying to do whatever it is to support the European Parliament in the elections, the Committee of the Region, uh, the European Parliament, all of us should be ambassadors if, if we believe in the European project and we should be out there knocking doors ourselves, for the vote or not. Thank you. Okay, just before we go to Matthew, just on that point, you can't go force editors of tabloid newspapers to cover EU stuff if they don't want to cover it. So how do you encourage them to do that? Because they see a lot of EU stories as just boring and not relevant for their audiences. 
give the headline. Dare I say this because it might be treated or something? Um, uh, European Union um, uh, threatens banker or, or something like that. You know, some sort of. Um, sorry, I don't know what it is, but some sort of headline <laughs> that will attract the tabloid. I don't know, but you, you you might know a better one than I do. <laughs> okay, <coughs> Matthew, make it easy. Race to the bottom. Um. <coughs> Yeah, I want to come back to what you said there as well, but on the on the question directly, um, I mean, I'll take issue with the with the premise. Actually, the the video that I showed uh, listed uh, 800 specific uh, taxes and fees that were raised over the course of four uh, uh, state budgets. Uh, our research team waded through literally hundreds of pages of uh, budget documentation to pull the list together. Uh, uh, the the the, the video was sourced, uh, the PDF that you could uh, download to, to check the, the facts of the video was uh, more than 100 pages long. Uh, I mean, if that's coming down, I'd hate to see what, um, what uh, detailed looks like. Um, so look, we, we presented something in a simple way, uh, but I don't think that's dumbed down. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, I think there's a layered approach here. Uh, some of our communication was uh, uh, 45 second videos with can, can music in the background, as factually based as it was. Uh, we also published hundreds of words every single day uh, of uh, uh, refuting uh, Romney attacks, uh, presenting the facts about Romney's uh, 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 um, policies. Uh, some of those were in blog posts and, and very detailed, some of those were in Facebook graphics and, you know, a world map of where, where in the world Mick Romney's money uh, has been parked offshore. Um, you know, there are layers of uh, complexity, and I think you have, uh, uh, those are related to who your audiences are. Some audiences will watch 47, 45 second videos, some people will watch uh, and read uh, much longer uh, blog posts. So, um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time, we had a huge research department uh, putting the facts together, uh, and we had a, a really wide range of mechanisms to communicate that message. But, um, I think that the, the idea that uh, the Obama campaign was, was dumbed down in, in some way, I think, is a bit farther up. Okay, other questions? Okay, gentlemen, back here. Just just for interest, uh, it's a, sorry, Simon Buckley, PSA. Um, just for interest, perhaps we could have a price per citizen for the Obama campaign work. Uh, I presume that you want Matthew to give you that kind of please, estimate. Please, yes. uh, what is it, a citizen? You mean in terms of what well, it costs? Well, the US has, has yeah. uh, what is it, 450? Well, maybe a, a, an easier question would be what generally was the cost of running the Obama 2012 campaign? One billion dollars. <laughs> uh, the campaign, the campaign uh, overall spent just over a billion dollars. Um, uh, you know, I mean, that's obviously a different scale. And, uh, you know, I think there's two things I'd, I'd say about, about that. Uh, the first one is to go back to what I was saying before, and I think that quite a few people have tweeted about this during the presentation and during this discussion that, you know, the, the direct lessons aren't necessarily comparable. And I'll just go back to what I said at the end of my presentation. Um, if you try and translate literally across from what the Obama campaign did uh, and try and copy, uh, uh, you know, huge chunks of what, of what we did in the States, you're going to have a bad time. You know, I didn't, you know, it would obviously be great if we're in a situation where campaigns didn't cost a billion dollars, and I hope we don't get there in, in Europe. So uh, I just go back to that, that point that why, why I try to set out and what I think that we should, how I think we should approach lessons from the US is to think about some of the principles that underpinned the successes in that campaign and, and think about how we can learn the, the lessons from those principles rather than trying to read across the tactics. But the other thing I'd say about that billion dollars, um, just over a billion dollars, is you know, 700 million of that was raised online uh, in small amounts from four and a half million people. Four and a half million people stepped up and owned a piece of the campaign that, that we ran, giving on average, I think, $63 each. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, that in itself uh, is a powerful uh, example of engagement. I know we don't have that as much uh, in, in the European uh, in European elections as they do in the States, but I think that 
you know, sometimes we can be a bit dismissive of, of the money side in, in American politics, because I, I actually think that being able to raise that kind of money, it's not just good for a campaign to be able to you know, do the things that it wants to do and, and, and run a campaign that it wants to run. I think that in itself is a good example of uh, citizen engagement. Okay, um, more questions? We haven't taken one from this side of the floor yet. Anybody interested in asking a question? If not, there are plenty of ones to put to our panelists. Anybody over here? No? Okay. <laughs> um, maybe if I can bring in... Have we got a question? Oh, right, okay. In fact, it's, uh, and I'm Monika Kaptowska, I'm representing Polish region of Wielkopolska and Brussels. Uh, in fact, it's not a question, I just would like to comment the video of the European Parliament, if I may. Yes? Okay. So, um, I would like to say that I like, of course, this approach to show the history of Europe, the unity of Europe and uh, people. Um, I just miss some positive energy in this video. And I think that, because, in fact, this video is uh, quite sad, I would say. And why Obama is winning? Because he is positive and he's full of energy. So if you want to attract people to go and vote, I think that we should promise them some positive future and we need more energy and more you know, joy in our messages. Thank you. Thank you. And what do you think of the slogan, Act, React, Impact? Excuse me? What do you think of the slogan? I think that the slogan is, uh, is very good because it shows that um, every, every uh, person can act and should think about uh, Europe and future. But uh, then, uh, if you remind uh, yourself uh, the, the, um, the faces in the end, these people are sad and they should be, they are lucky to live in Europe, in the EU, so I think they should be more happy and I would uh, suggest to produce another, better, more energy video. Thank okay. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Annie, what do you have to say to that? Okay. How should I interpret this upload? You agree that uh, this is a sense of sadness to uh, our video? Yes. Well, I think that uh, let me first explain. Uh, uh, What's uh, our approach? What has been our approach? We wanted this video to reflect, which is actually just a part of our institutional content. There will be uh, another video, there will be other communication tools, but this was uh, to kick off. And what it reflects? It reflects, I believe, we believe, real people. Uh, real people living today in the European uh, Union, living in an environment of uh, crisis, of economic and social crisis, and uh, living in an environment with a growing lack of confidence and, uh, and uh, trust uh, towards politicians, politics, towards uh, institutions. So certainly we wanted to avoid by all means uh, anodyne slogans that uh, have been used in the past or, or uh, 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 bubbling colors uh, in our institutional campaign. We want it to be uh, uh, reflecting uh, the current environment, the current uh, situation. So uh, certainly, as I pointed out, uh, the main purpose, and this is reflected to our baseline, is to uh, motivate uh, citizens uh, to be much more involved not to appear only more involved, not to make them feel more involved, but actually to make them more involved, and that uh, implies interactive communication, but again, this also implies another approach in the decision-making levels, that means taking seriously more into consideration citizens' concerns and citizens' uh, priorities, so uh, um, this is, because this is the reality, uh, maybe the most serious crisis that the European Union, the European project has been faced with through the years. And this is something that we have to acknowledge, to take seriously into uh, consideration. And I would say that uh, we all, at the national, regional, local, national, 
and European level have to have the courage uh, to uh, recognize the situation, assume the part of responsibility that, that lies to each level, local, national, uh, European, instead of passing uh, responsibilities uh, towards one another, uh, engaging more uh, European citizens, uh, make them realize more uh, that they are not consumers, as again Matthew pointed out, but they are citizens with a whole sense um, of the term, and uh, uh, engage them in a more active uh, way, not only through the uh, participation in the uh, election of May 2014, uh, but also in the whole process of decision uh, making uh, in Europe. Through, allow me to say, a stronger uh, role of the European Parliament because, uh, like it or not, the European Parliament is the only institution that can secure uh, the more active participation of the European citizens, is the only directly elected um, institution, is the institution that can guarantee, appropriate democratic legitimacy and accountability in the decision-making system. Okay. Um, Jean-Pierre, I think you wanted to comment on that, did you? Yes, I think that the good ideas were presented. I thank Mr. Massieu for the ideas he has given, but I think that the American and European issues are fundamentally different. The American presidential elections are a combat of personality. Of course, we can take des enseignements. Mais si on doit tirer des enseignements, c'est au niveau des idées. Et je pense que c'est les élections européennes, c'est un enjeu d'idées, c'est un enjeu de société. Et si l'on veut communiquer sur des choses qui sont aussi concrètes, il faut le faire d'une manière qui touche directement les citoyens européens dans leur vie quotidienne. Il faut transformer l'Europe du mythe en une réalité. Et pour ce faire, je crois que ce qui touche le citoyen, c'est un message d'espoir et de progrès. Et ce message d'espoir et de progrès, c'est ce que l'Europe n'a pas cessé de construire depuis 60 ans. Il est important, je pense, de, de rappeler les réalisations, et de rappeler les acquis et de les projeter vers le futur pour une société en développement permanent pour le bien-être de l'ensemble de ses citoyens. Je pense que ce message d'espoir n'est pas suffisamment présent dans notre communication. Il faut pouvoir toucher la partie de l'intelligence émotionnelle. Les choix ne sont pas que rationnels. On ne convainc pas les lecteurs avec des arguments juridiques. On le convainc avec de bonnes histoires qui sont le reflet de l'impact de l'activité des institutions et du Parlement européen dans sa qualité de législateur dans sa vie quotidienne. But how are you going to do that? Because that's one of the key questions to ask and to be answered over the next couple of days. There's a lot of hostility towards the EU, especially with austerity and everything. People don't feel in, in, in many countries, you could argue, that the EU has been good to them over the last five years or so since the economic crash. Now, those sentiments may be right or wrong, but how do you turn that around and how do you engage people and get them to see perhaps positive reasons why they would turn out to vote next year? Je pense tout d'abord qu'il faut éviter de faire de l'autoflagellation euh, et de se faire l'écho de ce qu'on lit dans les journaux, comme l'a rappelé Jane. Ce qui fait vendre la presse, ce sont les gossips, ce sont les scandales, Mais il faut aussi qu'il y ait de bonnes histoires à raconter. Et c'est ça peut-être ce qui, sur lequel on doit mettre l'accent. Si vous interrogez des vacanciers au bord d'une plage, quelle que soit la mer, et si vous leur dites que vous êtes satisfait de la qualité des eaux de baignade, bien évidemment qu'ils vont vous dire oui. Est-ce que vous savez que c'est grâce à la législation européenne Ah bon J'ai pris l'exemple des jouets tout à l'heure. Ça aussi, c'est quelque chose de concret. 
Si vous prenez votre douche tous les matins, vous ne risquez pas d'être intoxiqué par l'eau qui sort du robinet ou de l'eau de la douche. Pourquoi Parce qu'il y a une législation européenne sur la qualité de l'eau. Quand vous prenez votre petit déjeuner, vous ne risquez pas d'être intoxiqué. Pourquoi Parce qu'il y a une législation sur la qualité de la nourriture. C'est tout ça que nous avons rappelé. C'est tout ce qui touche le citoyen dans sa vie concrète. Il doit euh, faire partie des bonnes histoires que nous avons à raconter. J'ai parfois l'impression que les institutions européennes sont comme, comme un grand magasin dans lequel on a les meilleurs articles, le top de la qualité, et on n'a pas d'acheteur. Il faut attirer l'acheteur, il faut attirer les acheteurs. Ok, très bien. Nous avons une question de cette côté de la floor, je pense. Merci. Moi, en plus, ce n'est pas tellement une question, c'est plutôt une intervention de la parlementaire. Je suis pas dans la salle. Et la vidéo que vous avez applaudie tout à l'heure, parce que c'est comme ça que je l'interprète, me fait partie du travail que les services sont en train de faire pour le moment en collaboration avec la, la vice-présidente. Je ne voudrais pas euh, concentrer le débat sur euh, une comparaison entre les, les, les élections euh, européennes et les, les élections américaines, parce que c'est absolument incomparable. Je voudrais dire cependant qu'il euh, y a dans toute part de campagne politique, ce qui n'est pas notre cas, nous avons une campagne institutionnelle avec des limites très précises et euh, une méthodologie de travail et, et une, une ligne euh, très claire euh, de différenciation entre le politique et l'institutionnel, ce qui complique considérablement notre travail. C'est une difficulté. Ce qui caractérise les campagnes politiques aujourd'hui, c'est le degré de, de, disons, de recherche et d'analyse scientifique qui se pas cette élection. Ne nous y trompons pas euh, lorsque on parle des dog knockers aux États-Unis, euh, lorsqu'on parle euh, du fundraising, etc. C'est le résultat d'un énorme travail d'analyse du terrain, de segmentation du terrain, où ça a été la vedette, la vraie vedette des agriculteurs américaines, mais je regrette que ma fille ne soit pas ici pour le moment, c'est le travail extraordinaire qu'ils ont fait de segmentation de l'électorat. On s'adressait à une segmentation très précise de l'électorat. On savait si la femme votait Obama ou le mari votait euh, le, le, les, les, les républicains. Donc, euh, il y a dans toute communication politique une dose de recherche et de préparation du terrain qui euh, relève véritablement d'une activité à part entière. Nous, au Parlement européen, peut-être que ce serait là le débat de ces, de ces choses. Ce que nous avons fait pour cette campagne, qui est différente, comme Mme Pellemata l'a dit, pour bien des raisons, c'est développer des outils euh, les plus modernes possibles, les plus précis et les plus, euh, et les plus interactifs possibles, et de les mettre à la disposition des politiques. Jamais nous ne nous substituerons au travail du terrain des hommes politiques. Et là, Jane l'a dit, elle a répété, elle le sait, on a eu l'occasion d'en parler très souvent, le politique reste le politique et nous, nous donnons les plateformes. Les plateformes, nous les mettons à la disposition de l'ensemble des institutions, avec l'ensemble des institutions et, et, des, et des comités, et donc de vous tous qui êtes dans vos régions. Et donc, c'est un travail d'information, c'est un travail de mise à disposition d'un outil euh, qui est... Euh, important, qui est de base, mais jamais la communication institutionnelle ne peut prétendre euh, se substituer à une information politique. Et chacun de nous a son rôle très différent. Merci. Thank you very much. I know our panelists want to comment as well, but there was a gentleman with a question here and somebody over here. So what I'll do is I'll take both your questions and then we'll come back to the panelists. We just have a few more minutes for the panel today. Yeah, oh. I... Sir, one, one moment. Uh, do you have to go now? Okay. Um, so, Annie has to go, so if you would give a big warm uh, round of applause. I'm from the land of Bremen in Germany, uh, since a couple of years in charge also for public relations and European uh, issues. I want to elaborate a little more of, uh, on the movie we saw, the video clip, uh, because we, uh, my colleagues and we, we've been really surprised very